Welcome in the ring to each and every one of you. Welcome in the ring, folks, wherever you're joining us from. Peace and power. Boots on the ground, good folks. Peace, peace, peace and power. Hit that bell for us one time as you rock and come in, folks. Good to see some good folks with us tonight. Anne-Marie Selby, Edward Brooms. Kyle Bino is here already. Good to see Kashmir Semple is here. Verlin Ward is here. Delon Benjamin. Anthony Jarvis. Good to have Tessa. Tessa, hi. Good to have Sandra Ford here with us too. Good to have you, Sandra and Andrew Law. Good to have each and every one of you folks. Share that live for us. Please and thank you. Smash that emoji button for us as well. We are happy to see each and every one of you here. Share, share, share the live and smash, 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 smash. Smash that emoji button as well. We trust that you guys are good and well. Wherever you're joining us from, Marilyn Stobie, Roxana Dessa, Jacobs, Orin, Don, June, Chase, and all the other folks joining us. Great to see each and every one of you on the live tonight. We got Leon Logan out front tonight. Odessa, Trevor Davidson. Good to have you, Trevor. And all the other folks joining us. Sukchan Sudhari, Sudhari Sukchan. For instance, Neon Harding is here too. Glycis Mingo Burns is here as well, folks. Share that live for us. Smash that emoji button wherever you're rocking and coming from. Good to have the folks who are joining us from Itika. Thank you for joining us tonight. Itika. Good to have you, Elizabeth Williams. Good to have you. I see Wilton Blue is here. Gail Alicock. Deborah Sharona Lynch is here as well. Pace and power, folks. Share that live, April Small. John and all the other folks and smash, 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 smash that emoji button as well. Good folks. Welcome in the ring to each, to each and every one of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome in the ring, good folks. Welcome in the ring. We trust that you guys are good and well and all is good and well with you. Wherever, 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 wherever you're joining us from. Pace and power, good folks. Pace and power. We got to fight cards. Set, set, we set, we set, we set. We set. We set, we set, we set. It's just some of you all. It's just some of you all. We set, we set, we set, we set, we set, we set. We set. Anti that of Wickenham, folks. That's the team tonight. And the seven white elephants. <laughs> we should have had the PPPs. Seven white elephants. Or maybe the seven white elephants of the PPP. Antidata, the legendary antidata of Wakanam, and the seven PVP white elephants. Folks, we trust that you're good, you're great, you are well. Wherever you're joining us from tonight, peace and power. White elephant number one for the opener. White elephant number one. Folks, as I said, we were in Wakanam over the weekend, and oh, we met with some lovely folks. We were treated very hospitable. Even more hospitable than the rest of the country because the folks are different there in Wakanam. You know? But it's not everybody. Some of them, the heart that. But I tell you about number one, those of you who joined our program this morning, yeah, you saw this white elephant. Take a look, folks. Take a look. White elephant number one, Wakanam, beautiful island in the Esequibo River. Take a look. Take a look. We have it. There's two things we are looking at here, President. We're standing here on the San Susi Street. And this street, take it down to another street at the back here. But the government then, the PPP, see it fit to encroach on this plot of land, which is a street, and build this proposed pump station. This pump station they build, and we told them you cannot build it here. They insist on to build this pump station here. When we have a pump station at Nikodak, they didn't buy that product. But what happened later, they spent $60 million in building this pump station. And if we look at it presently, the door is closed and everything is finished there. We asked many times, what what happened to the pump station that you have started here? Nobody looking at it. Nobody. So this pump station doesn't work. No, it never worked. Um, How long was this built here? This is built during the PPP, 20, 
12, 2013. 2012, 2013, yeah. and this pump station doesn't function? No, never function a day. And this is this is but a room. Oh. Basically, I'm not too sharp at measurements, but this is a small yeah. uh, building. It could be a guard hut if you don't know what's behind here. And you tell me, what, what's the cost of it? I'm bracing myself. Oh, $60 million. $60 million. million. It's a tool. So what we see here? We see a, a, a small building there. Let me try to get it a little closer. You can see right there. Let me, let me get it a little closer. You don't know what is inside. It's a secret. Yeah, apparently. So you're telling me $60 million. million. Dollars. So what are we seeing here? $60 million left idle. This is but a room here. Yeah. I don't even want to answer it with the measurement. It's because I might lead you all astray with that. But this is a simple room as it were. Yeah. I don't think you could fit a bed in there properly. No. Never work today. The only thing happened there, they drill. And I think they seal it off. Drill and seal. And that's it. There's no pump in there. And sixty million dollars. Sixty million dollars. And basically a white elephant. It is. Never function it. Never function. You see the only thing with it, there's a white elephant, but you got a little blue on it. <laughs> so, I don't know when the minister would look at it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they would spend some more money on it so somebody can have some money. I'm trying to get a little closer. Give you guys another angle. $60 million, see. Mm -hmm. The gentleman is selling us. Was you, Sebeldes? And he's saying, never work today. Around 2012, 2013, there's a door there. That's the extent of it right there. Never work today. I'm seeing some piping running at the back there. Some pipes there. Our brother says $60 million. Grass is on the ground here. All manner of things. Little room. $60 million. Heading back out. This has never concerned the residents here, you know? <laughs> the, the residents read this on a number of occasions, but um, it's not real. Mm -hmm. Nobody come back to investigate or see what they would do with it. Mm -hmm. But the last thing happened that they dig a well at Nykodak, where the old well is, mm -hmm. and they were hoping, according to the president, We'll have treated water, but it's a big question mark, when? Yeah. But the water is a very poor quality of water, very, very poor quality. We have some concerns. Our brother obviously has some concerns. Why tell you what number one, folks? Why tell you what number one? And we can um, but folks, one of the other reasons we went to Waken Up was to show support as a coalition with anti data. And some of you, just in case you forgot who anti data is, legendary anti data. She shot to fame just before the last local government elections. She's always a big name on the island of Waken Up. Take a look at what she said just before the last local government election. Yeah, my name is Jacinti Caldata, Francis E. Wakenham, and since 1965, I become a coach. And I always place my ex next to the cup. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore in the morning. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by that. Yep, 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 yep. If you gotta lose by one vote, you gotta lose by that to vote. So she had the particular fortitude to stand up for what she believes in. She had the gumption, the temerity. Now they're trying to victimize her. 
They're trying to thief pieces of land in broad daylight on the pretext. A road got to run close to where she has her house, where she owns the land. And you know, they only have to take in a piece of the reserve to build the road because the roads there are very narrow, very small island. But the mean to spite, the mean to victimize Auntie Data. There's a lot happening in the 592, folks. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot happening. Take a look, folks, as we showed you what we encountered on the ground there in Wickenham. The Auntie Data story, the victimization of this 77 year old woman of Wickenham, Auntie Data. Take a look at what we saw. Well, let me say first of all that Auntie Data openly and publicly came out in support of the coalition in the last local government election, much to the annoyance of the People's Progressive Party. And there's a famous video that is circulating all around social media and elsewhere, where she said that she's fed up with what they are doing, and if they have to lose by one vote, they will lose it by Data's vote. And since that was said, she has been faced with a lot of issues being targeted by political activists of the PPP on this island, and we are here today to lend our support, hear her story, and make it known to the world, and to, to cement the view that indeed this government is a vindictive one that is filled with people who cannot take constructive criticism. Excellent. Tell us about that victimization now. Well, the victimization has to do with her plot of land. Auntie Data has a plot of land in the street and it is 42 feet in width to 100 feet in length. And her measurement of the 42 feet in width carries it out a little on this what they purport to be a dam but our understanding is that this part here really became a dam through her own self giving it as a walkway from the former chairman of the ndc requesting it from her and her kindness she granted it now they want to make it look as though it is an established walkway and they want to convert it into a road in order to get it into a road they want to come onto auntie data's land and cause encumbrance but they can get it into a road all they need to do is exactly what they did in previous areas or in other areas which is to build a proper drainage system and have it in a concrete fashion as we saw before and easier access to good drainage and irrigation if necessary but you don't need to have an encumbrance on auntie data's land you can't steal the woman's land for what you proclaim to be development development can happen it can happen the same way how you have done other areas but i guess they're looking to just victimize auntie data and create mayhem as they're known for Look at this, it's called Yeah, if you look here, this is the culvert here. And if you look at the alignment, you can see that they are really trying to create an issue with Antidata for no reason at all. They can run this culvert in the way how it is situated and just reclaim some lands that were dug out in a manner that was not neatly done and if they reclaim that land the drainage will still be in place it will still be intact and it can bring the benefit to the people with proper drainage as opposed to wanting to make a big wide trench taking over anti data's land much to her dissatisfaction and uncomfortableness we cannot tolerate that it's wickedness it's the it's evil and demonic on the ndc and wicked on the part of endar to believe that he can come and try to bully a 77 year old woman well they want this whole thing they want to break the step on the platform off to make this whole thing a road right through and through mm -hmm. right so i object because i have a transport mm -hmm. i pay in tax mm -hmm. right and how they still proceed well they didn't hold up from last year february until this year february one year has been finished they contractor that do the piece there he say he wouldn't make back road they will turn the road for that way and pile off a piece of the trench and join it with that one 
it leave at that. I keep calling the contractor and asking, he waiting on them for the um, estimate of the trench. That's the last he told me, and that is it. Now, Tuesday, I was not home. When my daughter and call and said, I set a police and some men come and they break down the fence. When I reach them, I'm already finished. But police here doing what, Auntie Data? The inspector, the sergeant, and a neighborhood. But the sergeant, if you all see on the video, the sergeant passed in the order what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, the neighborhood say, tell me that, and like, look at me hand, me not touch nothing. Right? That your video. Uh -huh. But the sergeant passed the order. When I do came, then I asked the, the um, engineer, what you do here? I said, you come January, and you ask me, this is a notice come by the line. <laughs> but, I asked the engineer, I said, what happened here really? Where you come and do here? You come January, you ask me. Auntie Data, me and you are right. Me and you are about three, four times. I asked you, how oh, me and you are right? You say, man, me and you are right. Give me one little piece to make a walking track. I say, well, how much you will look for for this walking track? He measure from the trench straight down to me step in. I said, is this a walking truck or this is a truck truck? I said, object, none. He said, okay then, this will lift. And he walk away. The, the contract of the road was there. And all of them walked their way and then gone their way. Everybody gone their way. And it left at that from January until Tuesday. They come. Well, when I get to understand that is Wednesday afternoon when I came back from town, because I went to town. When I came back, then I heard in there, get invited to come at the masjid, Laila Tolka night. And then Tariq, which are the chairman, invite that same fellow going there, his wife, one name Ethel in the back and the greenhouse of the last name, Simple. Invite them to go to the masjid. And then there the meeting keep with them. Within there and them, as me understand, Wednesday night when we come back from town, and in that past the other, they must come and break the fence down. And so come, it goes this. Wow, that's interesting. Mm? It's wicked. It's wicked. Mm? Tell Sherrod, me, Sherrod, it's mm? very wicked to hear a seventy-seven-year-old yes. woman yes. who is mm? supposed to be enjoying mm? her. Uh, retirement from hard work, who is supposed to be living comfortably with her family, is being targeted by no less a person than Indar, who, I am told, came to the island, had a meeting, and set to break down the fence. I even saw a video where it is uh, said by the engineer in the video that Indar passed the message to break down the fence. It is just wicked because a matter like this requires the solution through the state organs that are established. The Guyana Lands and Survey Commission, the Neighborhood Democratic Council, and of course, Antidata with her documents. You go through it and you try to settle it as amicable as possible. When you read this, uh, um, this transport that is here with Antidata, it says that she has ownership of 0.2. 1183 decimal of an acre of land. 0 0.1183 is the, the the dimension of the uh, of the land that she has. And this this plan um, was dated the 25th of July 1959. 1959. So the the establishment and the understanding from senior citizens of Wakenham knows that this trench was not as broad as it is here right now. It was a drain and constant digging has caused it to be the way it is right now. What the government has to do is to do reclamation like what they did in other areas on the island. They can reclaim the land and establish their road. Nobody here is against the development of a road. Nobody is against the, the building and construction of a road, but we are against the encumbrance on Auntie Data's land. She has a transport for her property, and it demarcates where her boundaries are. 
And in that light, we believe that Indar should have operated with a greater sense of appreciation for the senior citizen of Guyana who has toiled in the soil for our country. I am therefore calling on the relevant authorities to do the right thing, which is to look at the drain, reclaim, build it similar to what you have done to, previous, to, um, to other drains that we have passed on the way, and you can construct your road without disturbing Auntie Data's land. Right now, if you want a quick solution in terms of access for these houses in the street, the immediate solution lies with connecting this road that you have here with that one that way. There is one that is here. This road here is already concrete road. All you have to do is connect this very road here that links this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven houses. These seven houses, they have to have access. I'm not disputing that. But connect the road here. And as I walk here, you turn left and you connect it to an existing road that you have there also. What is wrong with that? But Indar wants to play the big bad bully fully supported by Tariq, who's the NDC chairman, and the regional councillor, who's Asif. Tariq and Asif are two brothers creating mayhem on this island, telling people how much power they wield in this government at the expense of the ordinary citizens. It is uncouth behavior, unfortunate, and should not be tolerated. The people of Wakenham needs to speak up about these two people, man. They're overdoing it on this island. But Gansh, I'm very surprised that the minister didn't ask, for instance, to see the transport. I'm very surprised by that, because the transport would tell him, you know, what the facts of the matter No, but he's not interested in that. He is upset because this woman said openly that she is not voting for them. She will not be supporting them. And if they have to lose by one vote, it will be her vote. That is this woman's democratic right. Enshrined in the Constitution is that right for her to choose who she wants to be associated with. And let the records reflect that even if she was not associated with us, we would have still been here. Because injustice to one is injustice to all. And we believe strongly in representing everybody. So not because we are here with Auntie Data means that we don't want these seven houses to have egress and ingress. We want them to have ingress and egress. What we want Indar to do is to build a road from where it is there and take it to connect it to the other road and rectify this part that is causing the problem with Antidata. Rectify it by building a proper drain all across this country, Sherrod. We see them filling up trenches. We see them narrowing the drainage canals. We see them building deeper, but, but, but um, not so wide, narrow. It's deep, but narrow. And you can do the same here. You can go deep and be narrow. You reclaim the land, build your road, and let the woman enjoy her plot of land that she paid money for, that she toiled in the soil to build a home for her son and her grandchildren and her in-laws. Do not target this 77-year-old woman. It is wicked. It is evil. It is malicious. It is demon demonic. And Indar should dare not try to set, set foot on this island and create confusion with people who are living happy with each other. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Asharad. Um, I mean, I fully endorse what um, Ganesh has said. Uh, what, what we have done is that we have took a, a measurement from the pile um, for say, the far, two feet width. And if you look here, um, Sharad, this is where we this is where we uh, stop the forty two feet. And exactly what Antedata is saying is absolutely correct. Our land is a hundred by forty two feet width. And Ganesh is right. If you look here, the the road is here was used to connect before. And we are seeing also when we came in at the front, we see the narrow the canal and increase the road width. If you look at the canal here, history, there's only a two feet drainage that was there. But because of improper practice by certain engineers and so on, they end up digging the canal wider and out of line. Right? I don't expect Antidata at this age to go and fight this issue. We as politicians and as parliamentarians, we have to find easy way out and solution to help people. If you're going to take from Antidata, I don't think she has a problem. She was willing to give a piece. But you can take from the others too so she can get back her 42 feet. And that will be a perfect argument. 
You understand? So everybody who supported the minister when he came here, she said, well, I'm going to give the data two feet. I'm going to give the data one, three feet. So she can get back to far two feet to live comfortably. And like, I think uh, the argument that Danish made is taking up some of the drainage. Well, it's deeper, you're, but narrower. But, but you don't even have to go deeper. You have enough space. Yes. You have enough space here mm -hmm. to, 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 to take mm -hmm. the widening road and still mm -hmm. have the canal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Auntie Dato, what do you want to see become of this issue? Well, be honest, my issue is Lady Black the Trench. Since I'm a little girl going to school at by the station Methodist, this whole entire area was two feet drain. The drain was bracing on this hand. And from there is a big walking dam there from the head to the head. It carried down right through there at the back. Now they came and they break it away, make trench. I think that they should black back the trench and make the road. Leave me with my piece that may work. I work very hard. Night and day I work. I watch man in night. I work in the day. Forget what I get. I've been there from door to door all the days of my life. 66 years then I achieve a shelter for put my head under. Adidata, I know you're emotional in this issue because you grow your barn here. 1959 is not ordinary years. But I want to tell you this and all those who are viewing this here. That whenever they victimize, especially East Indians who want to speak out against them, we will be there. I will be there. Chara Duncan will be there. Ganesh Mahi Paul will be there. I will be right in your face and show the discriminations. So don't get upset when you see United Nations ask you for discrimination. Discrimination has belly forms and I think not only in race, but many forms. And we're going to highlight it to you guys. Thank it you very much, Chara. It me, hearted me for no one. Me got through from last year, February to now. It hurt him. This whole couple, they asked me that. I mean, I eat food. I mean, I eat last night how my stomach hurt. And I tell one of them in this house hey, that my stomach pain in me. Me in sleep for the night. Yes, man, I get home and drink two pan of dollars all as possible. How the stomach pain me? Because what the trust I take in on the trust. Huh? Why can't, I can't see why these people fighting, but it's this house. Look, the man up on the road there. Eh? A Negro chap from over there, and this this red tap out the third after this green the next one. These three people, Ethel, Rias, that the one who just passed out here, eh? very simple. These three people, they after me terrible. Forget the road, make eh? Imagine we fence and Rias a walk outside. He got a big walk. You could see where the post they got a big walk in there. Yeah? You still motorbike a right through, bicycle a right through. And you know his wife walks straight inside. Hey, last week, Sunday morning, stand here, video. Go back till opposite the door, and she walk inside and she bore out back and she at the gate and she stand up. Video me and my daughter in law. She sit right there where she did with a thin red night on her skin. We've been on too long week. And me there with my duster like this over the rail. And she videoing me. I turned to she said, girl, you like you got power? Will you come till here and video me and me that land and this house? What happened? Eh? She video, she laugh and she gone. I go to the station, I make a report about the incident. Nobody do nothing. When me do here this Sunday night, 9.20, Sam come, a police by the name of Sam. Came to the platform, they stand up at the step. My son called out. He been there right where me that till then. Me sit down watching a movie. Mommy look Sam come to when me come me see. Sam say good night. Me say good night. Auntie that me come tell the report to you make. That I went and talked to the lady. But she have nothing on her phone. I said would she keep it on her phone? When she know me come and say she make a report. She don't delete it. Then you show me. Say look this what she take at the post. I said the same thing she take the post. The same thing she take away. So she delete that portion. Hmm? There is nothing they do about that. The next day now, my son I make the gate at that end. She come and she walk in straight here. She husband walk out so and she come and start to reckon down for my son. I think that video, I don't know if you put up that part. If you see how, how she are reckoning for my son, then the man left on guard. Well, he and all open me, but when you cut she back, when you cut and you talk. This is a transport land and them kind of stuff. The man gone and report him that he cut she, cut his wife. When we got the station the day, 
when we come back from Tongo, the inspector go tell him police for arrest that um, he cost this man's wife. So my son asked, why? Who me cost? Look, I got a video. Look at the video. So they had to leave here. Sir. Hmm? Is this right to be me and my son a face here? Me not think so. And this bike have to go. He's supposed to go with since Wednesday in the bush. Because of Tuesday's breakdown, he could not. He could not. He did hold on, hold on. He boss man called this morning when he go make it. Me said, bye, tell the man. Tell this thing, sir. We'll tell her we get at ease. Then. Now we're to open. My mind, she came. I got to go back and mind. My mind, one time 50, one time 75. Me sell out them. So I got to buy back. But me are scared. For mind the chicken for these things that are going on. You know? I don't know what they can go and throw in my pen and, 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 and kill my chicken them. So you're living in a country, Auntie Dati, where you're being huh? literally prosecuted uh, uh, for your political beliefs. Yes. Why, Mika? The thing is that you got to be afraid now. Now me got to be very afraid because I can't know what I can come and do. Anybody can come or break my house down because of the road, you know, and get me off the land. And I, Where should I go? Yeah, yeah. But, but I think MP, yeah. MP Mahi Paul... And MP Diona Ryan raised an important issue. Mm -hmm. Now, in other parts of this country, they're taking in the road. They're, 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 the trench. Yeah, they're, the they're, trenches, the trench, sorry, yes. The trench and yes. the drain, making them deeper mm -hmm. but yes. narrower yes. to create more space for the road. road. Why can't they do that here? Well, I don't know. I keep telling all the ministers that come here, a lot of ministers come here, and all of them I told the same thing Black the trench, make your road. I have no problem. But they don't want to do that. Seeing this is an easy way for them. Black in the road, they have to get material, so they mean to save more money. But then what happened with the oil money, what they're getting? No, that, this is not an easy way. Mm -hmm. The easiest way. And that is the easy right way. Here. It's a shorter distance from where this road yes. ends to where that yes. road ends. Yes. If you look at this one, it's a long distance. It's a long, long distance. distance. We'll have to yes. do pavement and yeah, all these things. Yes. But because of the statement that you made, yeah. You understand? They want to politically mm -hmm. victimize you because mm -hmm. they don't like when East Indian speak against them. Mm -hmm. And that is the trouble that we're getting. When East Indian stand up to for their rights and speak like, using the democratic yes. rights and the constitutional rights, they have an issues with it. And they're afraid. You know, one of my friends told me that, you know, how there's got shit all over when they got start the house. Yes. All over the shit. Yes. But the truck, the trade, the road, anyway, anyway shit. you know why? Yeah. Because he knows his days are numbered. Yes. And that is what they're happening to the PVP. Mm. Mm -hmm. You understand me? The short time is coming to them and they know they're under pressure. We didn't create this pressure. They had all the oil money, everything mm -hmm. they had. They're mm -hmm. supposed to take care of you. You're mm -hmm. supposed to get a pension of a hundred thousand dollars a month. You got a hostel for buying a, a chicken. I don't know what Dr. Vinay is doing. No, and look, I'm going to show you here now. I'm going to tell you this here now. Then came and them um, they may give flood relief, right? Well, the owner that I buy from tell me to plant the one lot with the machine there right. and plant the other one I buy. Well, them soccer at the back there is my own. Okay. All there is my own. But after through in today, we couldn't plant back there yet with the machine. You know, then give flood relief. I had 350 soccer to plant and the coca used to take water four and a half in here every washing tight and flood. All my bottom house used to flood. That money come, me go and me tell them, you got to book your name. Nobody hold me. Mm. The same man at the back of the one, the flat concrete there, mm. he hadn't even one okra tree. He named God, only get 100,000 bike, battery bike. The other one over here, the same thing. He buy battery bike, now got nothing. Mm. Me had 350, Sucker. nobody give me nothing. And me not look, me not fight down. Money come again, forgive people for buy, do small business. Like you want to mine like little chicken and ducks, and, you know, yes. or open a little stand, selling little thing. Yeah. It go between the council and them in the, in the council office. So are you saying to us mm -hmm. that because of political friends, they're getting mm -hmm. the benefit of this flood relief money? That is what is happening here. Yeah, because, because... all of them, but then I hold me, right. then I give me none. Right. Right? All of that what they do, then I give me a mindful, man, I got it. Me buy me chicken, me make me pen on me. Material come on this island to give to people. For make cheap pen, foul pen all. Nobody who at me. And me not go neither to ask and beg. Mm. I make my pen on my own behalf. From a little pension that me get. Me save, save. Me do what me have to do. Me buy me chicken. Me mind, I don't mind one set 50, one set 75. 
Well, me tell me, say, me not buy back as yet because the concrete inside that me make the flooring, it shrink and red ants boring out to the side. So, me have to buy a sack of cement now and me going to mix it and get it full up the crease right away, wrong back. Mm -hmm. That prevent the ants. So, then me go buy back. Then why killing me? Me can't get it open like that. Me want to mine some Creole duck and Creole fowl. But I can't get it open, the yard open. Because then go walk all over the place and they're going to eat it. Yeah. Me cut to fence. Now my fence back and then come them break. Down. What should I do for a living? What should I do for a living? Tarek knocked me off from the job. I was on this NDC work from... Um, 2006, 14th of February, I was employed on that work, but Barrett Jack, they opened. And 2022, Tarek knocked me off clean off. For what reason did he say? I can't say. This is the chairman of the NDC here. Yes. Tarek Ahmad. I can't say. No one called me back for say, well, work open, come out, come sign contract, the January. But when I go up on the road, some two lady asked me, Auntie Auntie, and I walk back. I said, yes, but I'm walking open yet. She said, no, all the labor gone in the trailer. Then I walk in the office and go to Tariq himself. Ask him that I get to understand work open, but nobody call me and say, well, I'm come sign your contract or work open or whatever. You get knocked off. That's the way. So you are facing degrees of victimization here in Wakanam. Well, as one may be talking, that I mean, come in as yet. Yeah. That is last year or something. Mm -hmm. That before, the year before, he knocked me out. So what was victimized then? Who do me that? Yeah, yeah. As a yeah. person of vindictive. Hmm? Why is it? Because I'm talking the truth that what's going on. When we are at work, the four men come away, nine o'clock at the office, left away. The rest of the labor don't want to work. So when we talk, we get paid for 11, uh, till 11 o'clock, we get for four hours, I need even work for an hour and a half. That is, I suggest that because I get knocked off. Because I mean, see nothing else more. Yeah. You understand? You're speaking the truth. Yes. And that gets you in trouble here in Wakanam. Yes. Wow. That road where you see coming is a white rent at the back here. You see how how narrow they left? Mm -hmm. They fall up the whole thing. What do you hear? What do them hear? Yeah. yeah. So they really mean to push you. Oh, uh, yes. Come into your land here. Mm -hmm. Maybe knock you out of your land. Yes. Well. Yes. Yes. Very but that was them a fight because this this boy was on a bicycle. He and his brother. When who been come? I Nigel or I Jill Waini man. A fat nigga chap. Mm -hmm. That minister been come and stand up there. And the two brothers turn and tell him, excuse me, take your son so off the land. Rock his house or a son so off the land. Yes. That is a dam. The same two brothers. Wow. Right? And the brother is a, 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 a pastor. Of a Presbyterian church. They live and we outside. Me and me here like in a comeback. Wow. That's something else. Since last year, this thing, the on February, 9th of February till now. So this has been coming up, coming up, coming. heating up, heating but up. But it been ease because nobody in been come. But after this, in that come at the masjid, and Tariq invite them this to go there and then go, and what's matter not. Discuss the I don't know why in there not been sent for me too. As me and the one got the problem, yeah. Why did he send for me for clarify everything between them and me? Let me say what they make me document show you there. No, he discuss with them and he do what he got to do and he got me. Very interesting That's development here. Sunday night that happened and Tuesday, then come and then break down. It is fair to me what's happening in this country. No, I can't understand it. Yeah. Look, simple. Moko. It grieves my heart when I look on the Facebook what happened to Moko people. Regardless of what race, what religion, whatever. All of you are one people. One God has created me. And look how them people tears. But their tears are flowing on the president of Guyana. It's flowing. My tears is flowing because I keep praying and talking. I keep praying to God and tell God, have mercy upon him. Have mercy upon him for what he is doing with all of me in Guyana. Look on the highway. You see them little children laid on the grass and cry tears. Oh, man, come on, man. Come Your on. Foot. You don't have a heart. 
what you are doing with people breaking down the house, got their children lie down in grass. Now you come to me, I have two little grandchildren and children this. Me can't come out of the house or them a whole lamp for me. Hmm? As soon as me put on a clothes, grandma, where you going? Then I want to see police look since that thing happened Tuesday, then two children rose with fever. Frightened, the frightened police body, especially the big one. Bad frightened police. Rose, rose, rose with fever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. Tell me why is it about this thing going on in this Guyana? Then you said one people, one nation, and one destiny. Is this is it? One Guyana. Huh? And one Guyana is this is it? We are one people, we are one nation, we are one destiny. Do he show in that to the people? No. No. It's totally wrong that this what's going on in Guyana. Not on politician, men are based on a politician. I'm not a politician person. I don't know any racial. Be honest though, I, I don't know. I mix and middle. I have Negro people and my son in law and all these things. I don't know any racial with nobody. I care about everybody. I love everybody. You understand? I am bathing there. Look, this man, I've been in bed there and come back. They must come for me. I go. I don't have a fee charging, but you give me that so okay. Come tell me self that the last thing you're doing for that person. Regardless. Only Muslim I do me. But Christian Hindu, man and woman are all. Why targeting me? Why? 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 I want to know why I am getting this targeted. I can't sleep in the night. I'm not eating no food. The food not go down. Regardless. You're stressed. Because of stress, yes. You take the food, the food like even I got even taste to me for it. She around them and she around at me now eat food, but I can't. Now that men want it, bear to me lift one. But thank Christ for give me a strong heart and give me strength for stand up for what me I got through. Hey, Brother Perry can table for telling you what I am facing and going through. Because he lives on the island. I mean, let's go here and tell him. Stay strong, yes. Auntie Data. Yes. You got to stay strong. We're going to stand with you yes. too. Stay strong. Yeah. Yeah, that's some of what we saw there. Auntie Data. I'm privileged, very, very privileged to be joined by the MP who was with us there and let, let that charge there and we can um, garnish my Paul joining us this evening. Yeah, the one and only. Folks, we are privileged tonight to have with us Member of Parliament, Ganesh Mahipal. And as I've been saying, Ganesh was very instrumental to us going to Wickenham and covering the issues that we've covered. And one of the persons we talked with there is the legendary Antidata. Ganesh, lay it out for us what has happened recently that has brought Auntie Data to the fore. You know, she's always out in the front. But what recently occurred? Talk to us. Well, let me agree with you, first of all, that she is indeed a legendary woman. She is 77 years old, and she has the strength to stand up and fight against a regime that wants to make her life miserable when she is supposed to be spending this part of her life in a more comfortable environment, enjoying the comfort of her grandchildren and relaxing in comfort after toiling so hard in the soil. Auntie Data, uh, as she is famously known from the village of San Susi, Wakenham, has, as she would have said, been a voter in this land since 1965. And since then, to 2020, 2020, there's only one political party she knew and one political party she voted for all the time. And that was the People's Progressive Party. At the last local government elections, when we were in Wakenham campaigning, Auntie Data came up to myself and some others who were with me and she said, Ganesh, I can't take it no more. I can't take it no more. What this People's Progressive Party regime is doing to ordinary citizens is very much troubling, and I can't do it anymore. 
I cannot give them my vote anymore. I said to her, Auntie Data, are you prepared to let the public know that this is how you feel? She said, sure. And she went and she did a video where she said that if the PPP is to lose by one vote, it will be Data's vote because she has no interest in supporting them anymore. And she went on and she laid out how heavy cost of living is for her and her family and the people of Wakenham. She spoke about the, uh, the whole racial context of favoring one particular group over another. She spoke about uh, um, not being given a chance to express herself freely. She spoke openly about how there are two brothers on the island that are PPP aligned and they seem to want to control the entire public sector on the island, including the Guyana police force. And she spoke at length as to what is happening in Gaia in Wakenham there. And she did our video. Since Auntie Data did that video to now, she has been met with the harshest of treatment from the People's Progressive Party. And they have started by wanting to take away her land that she has a transport for. They believe, the PPP that is, guided by the two brothers, that this woman was not the rightful owner of this property. And they believed that if they upset her, by way of targeting her, it will send a message to the entire island that they must remain silent and lay themselves out as PPP only and nothing else. If there's one thing I'm extremely grateful for is to know that the people of Wakenham are becoming sensible by the day, or I should say more sensible by the day. I remember the coalition started out in Wakenham with a uh, hundred and something votes about five elections back. Now the coalition has over 500 votes that they would normally secure on that island. That goes to show that people are shifting away from the People's Progressive Party because of this dictatorial manner and this, uh, uh, this uh, authoritarian behavior that their representatives on the island have. So Auntie Data's place now is being targeted. And I said to myself that I cannot, as the regional member of parliament for region three, which covers the Wakenham Island, sit and allow Deodat Indar and the others to take their eyes and pass Auntie Data, who is 77 years old and should not whether she was PPP or is PPP, whether she is AP and UAFC or PPP, whatever. A human being, 77 years of age, worked all her life, hard as ever. I've known her when she used to weed in the trenches, when she used to cut the grass so that the water can flow. She did all the types of work you can think about, Sherrod, that people mm -hmm. don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And... Now is not a time for her to have this kind of treatment from a government, from a regime, from any regime. Nobody should be treated that way. Not only anti that, anybody, nobody should be treated that way. And that is what took us on the island. And you know, Sherrod, when we were on the island, we saw that this regime, in their attempt to build concrete roads all over the island, they took in or they reclaimed lands that were lost through erosion correct trenches and drains that were as not as wide as they are today they reclaimed and they made it narrower and deeper so that it can facilitate the water and effectively drain the lands when needed like if rainfall and so on but this particular drain that anti data is next to they don't seem to want to do that. But they have done it before, and we have images to show that they have done it before. So the question is, why do you want to encroach onto Auntie Data's property? That is an act of encroachment. And I said to Indar in a telephone conversation that if you want to go about 
with compulsory acquisition of the woman's land, there is a process for that. And compensation is something that one will have to talk about. But when we were on the ground, Sherrod, we saw that there is no need for compulsory acquisition. There is no need for the government to encroach onto the property of Antidata. And there is no need for you to build a road till to the steps of this woman's house and not allow her children and grandchildren to have a play area and enjoy the comforts of their property that is rightfully owned by this woman. What the government can simply do through the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, and this is what Diodat Indar should have sought to do, is to reclaim lands that are there, that can be reclaimed from a drain that has happened, that happened to have been enlarged over a number of years due to constant excavating, and they can reclaim those lands, have the drain in the size that it was, which means you make it a little narrower and you make it deeper so it can, it can have and accommodate the amount of water in cases of intense rainfall. And you can see from that diagram too, Sherrod, that the road that is being disturbed with about five or six houses and they need egress and ingress, they can concrete that road on the left, which is a shorter distance from those seven houses heading to the left and connect it to a street that is already there in concrete. That's about uh -huh. 50 feet. The one on the right, which is anti-data side, that's about 150 feet. But you know why they want to do that? Outside of hurting anti-data, they also want to ensure that one of their friend, one of their family, one of their favorite gets the contract at an exorbitant price and the drawback can be there to go into somebody's pocket. And if somebody tells me that Ganesh, it is Asif or Tariq that gets the drawback, I wouldn't doubt it because I know how scampish these two men are on the island and how they're trying their best to get full control of people's minds on the island. But Sherrod, as I said to you before, I'm extremely happy that the people of Wakenham have recognized that these two brothers are bad for business and they're slowly gravitating towards the coalition, leaving the People's Progressive Party to feel the penalty of what it is when you want to go down the line of being dictators. Yeah, and Ganesh, I, I was there on the ground with you um, along with other members of the team. Uh, when you got there, I saw, uh, I saw you give Auntie that a big, huge hug. What did you tell her? Well, I want to tell you that's how these people are. Wakenham has hospitable people. And you know, because we traveled across the entire island, uh, all along we went, and everybody we spoke to, first of all, I was a bit um, amazed that they spoke to us who are politicians from the APNU in such a, in the APNU AFC, in such a comfortable manner. Yeah. You would yeah. not have found that, you would not have found that five, ten years back. And yeah. almost everybody's home we went to, Sherrod, they were bold enough to tell us about what is happening on this island and how them as ordinary people are not feeling the wealth that this country is getting. And we were we were so moved by these comments. And, and it goes to show that when you're on the ground and you get the feedback, you can make informed assessments and conclude yes. as to whether yes. it is benefiting the ordinary people. And yes. there is no doubt that Guyanese are not benefiting. The ordinary Guyanese are not benefiting from the oil resources of this country. When I hugged Auntie Data, I said to her, we will stand with you. Because we are not here on the basis of that video you made. If it was anybody else, we would stand with you because injustice to one is injustice to all. Correct. And you know, um, you talked about being on the ground there and the candidate Frank Mann in which uh, folks spoke. Um, the two brothers you identified early on, one of the things that they're saying is that they're not feeling the services that should be provided at the local and regional level as citizens and the recent flooding there with the coca breaking the coca door and so on is just one of the more recent events there in which as one person said they're just riding past but nobody's stopping to see the needs of the people on the ground there in in wakenham it's, it was very interesting 
Let me tell you, first of all, one of the brother is serving as the chairman of the Neighborhood Democratic Council, and the other brother is serving as the regional councillor of the Regional Democratic Council. Mm -hmm. The system of governance is such that the NDCs govern a particular constituency or particular boundaries. So, for example, Wakenham, the entire island of Wakenham, which has about nine constituencies, that is governed by a council elected there of which that one brother is the chairman. This other brother, he is the regional representative on the regional democratic council. So the region that is supposed to oversee and provide guidance and provide assistance and provide all the necessary transparency and accountability yeah. index mark. Yeah. You see where I'm going, Sharon? Yeah. One yeah. cat yeah. is what watching the other one. Yeah. One cat is watching the other one. And if yeah. those two cats, they are both having their heads in the bowl of milk and they're drinking it out. So if the people on the island are, are not comfortable with one brother, they're supposed to be complaining to the other brother. Does that make any sense? Is that yeah. not a conflict of interest issue? Well, you know, we were, we were very kind to um, hear that many people said Perry Bearball is a good representative for them. We were very kind to hear that Angela Danny Ram was um, the one who frequently visit them in their times of needs yeah. and in their times of yeah. assessment and, and communication and comfort. And it's good that they have recognized that these people who are AP and UAFC aligned communicate and collaborate with the citizens on the ground better than not only these two brothers, but we heard people calling names like Teacher Jeanette coming just yeah. uh, passing on a motorbike yeah. and not even stopping in, not even finding out what's going on. And we also heard people saying that there are people who are in other communities that were hit with floods and so on, but to a lesser extent. And they, was, they received hampers, they received cleaning agents, they received monetary uh, assistance. And yeah. these people who are poor people who lost a lot, because when you are poor, even if you lost one item, it is a lot. Correct. And they said to us that they have lost a lot. We, Sherrod, may not value it as a lot. But when you know people's situation, yeah. when you understand how much they value a single item, then the word a lot is indeed applicable to what was lost. And not a single NDC official or the RDC brother has visited these people to bring some form of comfort or to at least say that the government will seek to compensate for damages. It was right. painful. Right. It was disgraceful, it was wicked, it was demonic, it was beyond evil on the part of these two brothers and the People's Progressive Party. And Ganesh, you, uh, you as an MP, as we said, you give oversight to this, uh, this piece of real estate, this region re um, here, um, Region 3, that, that, that encapsulates some of the Escobar Islands. Um, what's interesting here too, as you touched on money matters there, one of the issues that they raise, very frankly with us, is that the money not meeting them? These grants and small business grants and cash handouts and so on. Yes, they were family favorites through and through. I remember, Sherrod, we stopped at some shops and we asked them if they received the two hundred and fifty thousand uh, uh, small business bureau grant that was distributed. The small business bureau grant what was distributed by the two brothers. Yeah. These two brothers are not easy people to deal with on that island. Clearly. And I don't know why the people on Wakenham are afraid of them. They can't do them anything. The small business, Biru Grant, these shops that we stopped at never received it. They never received it. I remember, Sherrod, we stopped at two disabled people. Correct. Correct. And they got disabled by virtue of working and so on and they suffered their calamity very unfortunate yeah. Yeah. and they were they not recorded to receive the disabled grant that was distributed and the excuse is quite surprising and the excuse was they were not born disabled yeah. 
That is, that was, I didn't know that was a criteria for them to receive it. When we approved the money in the National Assembly, it was for everybody that is disabled. And these two people are no exception to that. But it is very unfortunate that we are in a situation where they choose the PPP operatives on the island. They choose their friends, families, and favorites to give. We visited another area. You remember, Sherrod, where the woman said to us that that lady over there, she's a PPP. She ain't got a shop, she ain't got a child, she ain't got nobody. But, but she get it $250,000. And there are people who told us that when they came to share the cash grant, they don't go house to house to verify anything. They sit underneath the mango tree and call everybody that is PPP oriented and distribute. These people are wicked people, wicked people. And yep. I want to say to the people of Wakenham that they have a chance to correct the wrongdoings on that island. They have a chance to bring it right. And it is as simple as putting your ex where it matters. And okay. that is against the People's Progressive Party and for the AP and UAFC. Give Perry Birbal a chance. Give Angela Danny Ram a chance. Give Sherlock Dunbar a chance. Give the people who stood by you, who are standing with you, and who will continue to stand with you in good times and bad times, that fair chance to show you that they are better than those two wicked brothers. Yep. You know, Ganesh, in addition to that, as we run Money Matters, again, the PPP's uh, stewardship uh, came out to Sharpview as we were there. We saw a quote-unquote pump station for $60 million that ain't pumping nothing. You know, we saw a, a drying floor for rice that ain't drying nothing. Millions of dollars these things have come up to. We saw an I think that drying floor, that drying floor was $19 yeah, million. A shared house, Danish, among other things. You know, about five, six, seven white elephants. A lot that of is white elephants. The airstrip that not a single plane has landed on as yet. There was, we were, we didn't have the time to visit the planting chip factory that was constructed by the PPP for millions of dollars. Not a single planting went there as yet. You talked about the, the, the pump station, the drying floor, the airstrip. You have a number of failed projects, several failed projects for millions of dollars executed by the People's Progressive Party on the island of Wakenham and not a single benefit to the citizens of that island. It is atrocious, it is worrying, and it calls for investigation by the audit office and many other organizations to see what is defined clearly in this instance as wasteful spending. I am sure, Sherrod, when we make our wrongs to the other islands in the Essequibo River, we will see similar incidents like those, which is not a strange phenomenon when it compares to the country as a whole. Almost every region, there are projects that can be deemed as white elephant projects and wasteful spending and pocketing of the money with friends, families, and favorites, jobs for the boys as the ordinary citizens continue to suffer at the hands of the PPP in what was supposed to be an oil economy for all. Yeah, the white telephones of Wickenham, we're going to uh, come back to that discussion uh, quite soon. Ganesh, and we want the folks to know, I think we're going back to Wickenham shortly as well, because we, as you said, we nearly, uh, we, we, we didn't get to touch as many places as we wanted to, to touch, the plant, the chip factory, among other, other things, and we want to rub shoulders more with our comrades there on the ground like Auntie that. And the people invited us, the people said, come and stay by us. Everybody wanted to cook for us. Everybody wanted to give us. We didn't even expect to spend a whole day. We were yeah. on the water when it was dark, coming back to GT. <laughs> it goes to show how hospitable the people are. Oh, I yes. love the people of Wakenham, Sherrod. I love the people of Leguan. I love the people of Region 3. And I must say to you that Region 3 is a very hospitable region. But it's very sad what they are going through, what they're facing with this cabal, with this regime that is not uh, sending down the benefits of the billions of dollars they're collecting from oil wealth. And that is very, very hurtful, to say the least. I want to assure the people of Guyana 
I want to assure the people of Wakenham, Leg One, the other islands, and Region 3, the return of the APNU AFC will see a change, and that change will ensure that the small man becomes the real man. Excellent. MP Ganesh Mahipur, uh, Shadow Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, thank you so much for joining us and for uh, being part of this team over the weekend. So, Leguan, as you said, we're coming back and we're coming other places along this Kubo River as well. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much, Sherrod, and good night to your viewers. Yep, there you have it, folks. There you have it. Who turn? The actor is imminent. It is now good, folks. But before you all go anyway, <laughs> I got another white elephant for you. I wish I could show you all tonight, but we're out of time. But before you all go, I got to give you all at least one more white elephant. Good, folks. At least one more white elephant. At least one more. And while I'm at it, I want to say good evening to all the hardworking counselors there. On the island of Wakenham, we got Sherlock Dunbar from San Susi. We got Auntie Hazel Edwards from Maria Joanna. We got hardworking Councillor Angela Danny Ram. Big shout out to Angela from Dumburg. Respect and manners to all our councillors, making us proud on the ground there in Wakenham. Fighting forward. We're bringing some backup shortly, folks. We're bringing some backup very, very, very shortly. So keep up. The good works there. Get closer. <laughs> White elephants galore on the island of, of Wickenham. Take a look and take a listen. Perry, we're here with what is supposed to be a shade house. Yeah. Talk to us about what's happening here. Well, this is Zelandia, Wickenham. Zelandia, Wickenham. Yeah. Uh -huh. The residents in Zelandia ask for a shade house and when i ask the shade house the government ministry of agriculture get a plot of land and they build a shade house mm -hmm. for so many years now nothing is going on here we cannot say that they reaped anything here because they never plant so what we're seeing here is just a building and the beds. Just the buildings and the beds. You understand? Perry, how would you let somebody how, how how does somebody get a plant here? If you wanted a plant here to use a shade house, how would you get well a plant? why I understand that the residents would come here and plant? But um this the last time I raised it at the RDC, they came and they filled some mold. And I see no other thing taking place here since then. What I see now is the Wodans taking over the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Wodans taking over the building presently. And there's nothing going on here. All the, if you look, there's so much of holes. Perhaps all this start to rot. Yeah, like you said, there's a, sh there's a shed here with a covering. Yeah. There's some beds, a lot of... Soil, dirt yeah, in these yeah. on these beds, but nothing yeah. else has been nothing done. Nothing else has been done here. And how long has this been done like this? Yeah, yeah, so this was for two, three years, man. Two, three years, nothing yeah. is not planted here. Nothing is planted. So there's yeah. another white elephant. Another white elephant. Have we been in other places on this island since we've been here? Mm -hmm. We touched the water place. Yeah. What, the, 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 what do you call that? That's, that's, the, that's that a is, well? That is a well. Oh, that's oh, a white well. elephant. That is a white elephant. The shade house here is a white elephant. The concrete, the drying floor is a white the elephant. The drying floor is a white elephant. Right? We haven't reached the airship as yet. That's another white elephant, millions of dollars. And if, when we meet there, we can talk to the rest. How much you estimate this cost, this drying floor? Not drying floor, they are there. Yeah, sorry, this the, shade house. Shade house. The shade house is their vicinity of a couple of millions. Wow. A couple of millions. 10, 15 million but dollars. I'm, I'm going to, yeah, but I'm going to get a figure for you. Yeah. Oh. But two or three years, nothing is happening here. Nothing is happening. And I think, um, they didn't have an insight about this place. Really like, what? When look at when you look at Zelandia, Caledonia, every single residence have large plot of land in the yard, which can plant anything and everything. Why do they have to leave their homes in the afternoon? That is a testimony here that the people cannot leave their home in the afternoon just to come and plant two pepper tree or two boar tree. 
or two shallot when you have big yard space. They will not find that time. And so I think this will remain for the longest while. But again, now, this would have happened maybe because of some consultation with the neighborhood, the community here that a shading house is needed because it clearly is not needed because nobody's planting here. The consultation is a party consultation. We need a consultation with the wider society, which have more knowledge than them, who will implement this program. They don't have time for that. They just want a shade house. Somebody got to make money. Somebody. And that is the game going on. Let me build something, you'll get money. You understand? I can't see it no other way. But I, I mean, it's a fields with two pretty architects on this island. You understand? And they want to put the money in somebody's pocket. Let me build it. I just hope people don't end up calling Rikadam the White Elephant Island. Or the White Island, I don't I think we're going to change that when the time comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it went down, folks. <laughs> A lot of white elephants. Auntie Dart of Wickenham and the seven white elephants. We owe you guys a couple more. We owe you guys a couple more. But that's going to do it for us at this. And I want to say a big thank you again to the MPs who were on the ground with me. Ganesh Mai Paul, Ricky Diona Ryan Ramsroop, all of our councillors, each and every one of our councillors. They're working hard in Wickenham, Charlotte Dunbar from San Susi. Hazel, Auntie Hazel, Edwards from uh, Maria, Joanna, and Angela Danny Ram. Hard working as ever. Angela Danny Ram from Dunbar. Good to have all of you working hard on the ground and representing us well there in Wickenham. And I can't forget the man who made that trip really possible, providing transportation. We ate out. We ate him out of house and land. The one and only APNU AMC Regional Councillor Perry. Bearball. Uncle Perry, thank you so much, Uncle Perry, to you and your darling, darling wife. That woman really makes you look good and keep you going. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the entire family there at Wickenham. Thank you guys for your hospitality. Yep. That's going to do it for us at this end, folks. That's our time and that's our program. Stay safe. Good to have had all of you on the live into the overtime. Ann Kurds and I see uh, Candy Lean Indigit, Rosetta, Diane, Mark, Brenda, Osman, Jamal. Let me go. All the other folks, stay safe. We're going to see you guys on the next broadcast.